Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel, and yes, today is the day if you've been following PreSonus' uh, social media, and if you're a Studio One user, Studio One version four has released today, um, and I know everybody's excited about it, and I know there's a bunch of people that are gonna create videos and reviews on Studio One version four, and I figured, because I'm gonna get a ton of questions from all my followers, what do I think of it? So I wanted to do the somewhat short video showing you from a mixing engineer's perspective how um, I like or what I like about these new version in version four. Now I've only been working with this about 24 hours or so. Um, and so I haven't really dove in deep to all the features that have coming with version four. A lot of those features are really more from a songwriting, song production, song creation perspective. A lot of the cool tools and upgrades to VST instruments and the chord tracker and all that stuff, which I'm not gonna demonstrate today because I don't use Studio One in that fashion. I am primarily a mixing engineer, a mastering engineer, and as you guys know, an educator. Um, and that's really where my world is as far as the way I use Studio One. So a lot of the upgrades and stuff to Studio one version four there's going to be fewer of those little bells and whistles that really help my workflow but there are a few and i want to show those to you today if you want to know about all the other great things that came along with studio one version four you can just search youtube there's a ton of people that are creating videos on that as well as PreSonus themselves. So that's what this video is gonna be about. If you don't wanna, if you wanna see demos of all those great things, you may wanna stop the video now and go and go check out some other videos. But if you wanna hear what I think, and a lot of you, a lot of my followers are gonna ask me, so I'm gonna share it with you. So there's a couple of things that I like. Now I wanna let you know right out of the gate that yes, Studio One version four is a paid upgrade. It is not a free upgrade from version three. I'm gonna refer you to the PreSonus website because depending on the version of PreSonus Studio One that you're using currently, the upgrade price may be different and I don't know all the different versions and all the different levels, professional, artist, prime, and what uh, all those upgrade packages are gonna be. But I'm sure they're gonna be reasonably priced and depending on what version you're coming from to go to version four will depend on how much it's gonna cost you. But I just wanted to let you know it's not a free upgrade. Okay, so there's a few things that um, that I like about this version right out of the gate. For, again, from a mixing engineer's perspective, the first thing I wanna show you is I wanna show you the load time of the actual application. Okay, so I'm using a Mac. Um, and I'll show you my, my specifications on my computer, so if you, if you wanna know. So I'm using a 2013 Mac Pro, and I am running the operating system Sierra, not the latest high Sierra, but I'm running Sierra, okay? So it is compatible with Sierra. I'm sure it is also compatible and will work just fine with high Sierra. High Sierra, I just have not upgraded that yet. So the specs of my computer are right here on the screen. It's a 2013 Mac Pro with an eight core, three gig, uh, three gigahertz processor with 32 gigabytes of RAM, okay? So the first thing you're gonna notice about Studio One version four, they have a new design of the icon, which is kind of cool. Not a big deal, but I like it better than the old dark one. So here is Studio One version four. Now, the one thing I will say as I'm launching the application is how much faster it scans your plugins and how much faster it loads. And I know every computer is gonna be different and depending on your computer will depend on your load time, certainly. But I can tell you comparing version four to version 3.5, it loads, uh, I'd say probably 20 or 30% faster. At least it seems that way. So that's the first thing. Uh, once you get into here and we're in the start page now, it looks uh, very similar, but I wanna show you some of the things uh, that I kinda like. So the first thing I wanna show you, um, I'm gonna open up a session here. We're just gonna open up one session quickly. Okay, and you can see how quick it loads the session here. Um, again, this doesn't have a ton of tracks in it, but it's got probably, I don't know, there's a, there's a bunch of audio files in here. There's probably, oh, I don't know, 30 tracks in here and it loads pretty quick. No plugins or anything, but the session loads instantly. So the first thing you're gonna notice right away is that the look of the of the, uh, the console is a little bit cleaner looking. It's got a little bit different style uh, styling to it. Um, I kind of like this better than, uh, than the version 3.5. Um, you can just see the way um, you open and close the uh, the channel strips look a little a little bit different. Things just look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more polished to me. The other thing that I really like about this too is now we've they've added uh, comment sections under the tracks here, where this is kind of a Pro Tools feature where you can add a comment. So like if you're in the middle of a mix or middle of recording and you wanna say this particular guitar was recorded with an SM57, 
Uh, you could just put, you know, SM57, and you could put little notes here, which I really find helpful, especially when I'm mixing as I'm uh, maybe doing a static mix and I'm first listening to the, a session at the, uh, at, the, at the start, getting my session set up. I used to keep a pad with a bunch of notes per track, and it would be nice to just drop some notes in here, like editing notes or maybe if uh, of, of a certain effect uh, comes to mind and I may want to drop on the track at a later time. These little notes are, are, are really handy, and you can resize them by doing this. So that's as tall as they get, which is really kind of nice. And the way you turn that on and off is over here on the left-hand side, this little wrench right down here, uh, show channel notes. So that's something new to version four that wasn't in version three. And I really appreciate that. I found that kind of a simple, but kind of a nice handy little thing here. The other thing that I noticed right away too, which I'm really happy about, and again, I know it's uh, I know it's kind of silly and kind of simple, but when you work in your DAW five, six, seven hours a day, as I do working on client projects, every little thing helps. If you want the color palette now is a little bit um, more variety of colors, a little bit uh, better color palette. I don't know if that's the right word, a better color palette, but it seems like we got more color choices, which I really like to color code your tracks. Uh, I really like that as well and when you expand the mixer you also have the color of the channel all the way up through the inserts which I kind of like too it makes things again just a little bit easier on the eyes and a little bit easier to find things if you have a large session so that's really cool the other thing I want to show you too is in preferences if we come to studio one preferences and we go to the general um, and we go to the appearance tab. Now they've uh, done some more customization uh, for your colors on your screen here, which they've, they had in version three, but now what you can do is you could do something like this, like your backgrounds. You could take the hue and you can come all the way over from one all the way over to the other. Here, if you want to, you can take the luminous and you can change that and you can invert the colors to white on a white background, which you couldn't do in the last version, which uh, which is kind of neat, which is, you know, again, depending on your lighting situation, depending on your monitor and stuff, a lot of people wanted to have something where you can invert the color like this and you can kind of have this uh, white background here. If I just hit uh, apply and OK, so you can see it without this in the way where you're, you have the white background, but you still have your colored channel strips. Um, and it just can, it makes things kind of pop on the screen a little bit more. And again, depending on how you have your lighting set up, your computer screen and whatnot, this might be beneficial. I know that was a heavily requested feature, by the way. Um, I never thought about doing something like that, but a lot of people have asked for that. And PreSonus went ahead and they, uh, and they, and they, uh, you know, they answered that, that request. I kind of like mine on the darker side. Um, you can also do the same thing to the arrangement window with the luminous here. You can go ahead and you can invert it like so. So if I do um, apply and hit OK, and now your edit screen here behind your audio wave files can be white as well. That's kind of nice too. Again, it gets things to pop off the screen. It's a little bit easier to see. So that's uh, that's kind of a nice feature where you can customize the way Studio One looks for you a little bit nicer. And honestly, you can also save uh, things as presets if you wanted to save different presets for different you know situations or whatever. And every once every now and again in uh, in version three, I would change my background and change the look at look at it every so often just to give me something different to look at, um, just so it's not so monotonous and the same. Again, if you're someone that works in a DAW all day long, um, those little features are are kind of nice. So that's uh, that that's that's pretty uh, pretty pretty cool as well. Um, so that's something that you can do there as well. Um, now, one thing I want to uh, make uh, clear is you want to be very careful of too. When you go to save a session from an older version, okay, and I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to close the session so I can show you. Just like when you went from version two to version three, if you have an older session, let's go ahead and close this. And I'm going to open up a, 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 an older session from version three here. Let's see if we could do that just so we have something, it's going to give you an error message because once you go to version four, you can't go backwards. So I want you guys to be aware of that. So let's, let's open up, uh, let's open up this here. May take a minute or two to load. Um, again, ton of, uh, ton of plugins and tracks on here, but again, loads very, very quickly. Um, this is a, this is a, this is a, a, a track from, uh, or a session from version three. Um, again, now if I go to save this, if I go to file, save, 
Okay, here it is. So it says Studio One, the file has been created with an older version of Studio One. After saving the file, you will not be able to load it in the old version again. Do you want to continue? Very, very important. So if you're not sure if you want to do something like that, I'm going to hit cancel. What I suggest you do is you um, open up that session and you come to file, go to save to new folder and create a new folder and make a duplicate of this session and then save it. So you'll always have um, a version in your old version in version three or version two or whatever version you're using. And then you'll also have an exact duplicate in version four. Very, very important uh, that you want to do that at least at first until you're completely comfortable and you're absolutely sure that you don't want to go back to an older version. I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that, but there may be some reason why you want to do that. There might be some, and I don't believe there is. I've used all of my third party plugins with version four. Um, I've, I've tested this with, you know, you guys know I got hundreds of plugins. I've loaded them all into version four. They all seem to work, but you might have some kind of a an offshoot oddball plugin, maybe that you know works in version two or version three, but doesn't work in version four. Again, that's the plugin manufacturer. It's not PreSonus or Studio One per se. Um, I don't think that'll be a problem. But again, something to be aware of. Just double check, make sure your plugins, everything is working. Because once you make that commitment, you can't go backwards unless you do a save to new folder. So those are kind of just, again, they're, I know there's only a couple here, but the thing that I like uh, thus far uh, in just playing with this for like less than 24 hours is one, the program seems a little bit more responsive. It seems a little more snappy. It definitely loads a lot faster. Um, I like the addition. Again, this is an older version right now. I like the addition of having um, our show, our, our, our channel notes. I love that. That that's to me, again, I, that's going to be very handy for me. I love that. I love the fact that you could change the coloring and you could change the customization of it. I also love the fact that they just give you some better, uh, and some more variety of colors for the color palette. I thought it was lacking in the last one. Um, and um, overall, I just think that it, it seems to be a little bit more snappy and performs a little bit better. I also don't notice with version three, I noticed that every so often when I'd close a session, um, sometimes it would um, it would close, but it would crash. Wouldn't ruin the session, wouldn't screw up my 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 song file, but it would it would it would crash every now and again. I've opened and closed version four now probably. 60 or 70 times with different sessions trying that and I haven't had it uh, you know, force quit or anything like that. It seems to be uh, much smoother in that respect. And again, I like the overall kind of look of the way the uh, of the way that the layout of the coloring and the and the and the layout of the of the console view. It just looks a little bit cleaner, looks a little bit more polished, it looks a little bit more tight, and I and I just like that. So overall, I'm 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 happy with what I've played with so far. Again, if you want to see a bunch of videos on all the different features, uh, what, like this, uh, the chord, the chord, open the chord tracker, and all the, the chord track and all that stuff, and you want to, you know, see a lot of the uh, the new improvements to the VST instruments and the performance of those, there's a lot of stuff there um, that I'm just not going to demo at least at this time because it's not how I use Studio One. But if you go to the uh, PreSonus website, I'm sure they're going to have a bunch of release notes. I think there's four or five pages of, of release notes in a PDF format where you can see all the different things that they added. And there's a lot. There's a lot of new features. But again, it's more focused on the song creation and production side of things where when they brought in from version two to version three, it was more for the mixing side of things, which is where uh, there was a massive difference between version two and vision th version three from a mixing perspective, if that's what you just really use the DAW for. This one is more for the song production and songwriting, song uh, song creation. So that is kind of my, you know, kind of my first look at it. I, I, I like it so far. I, again, a few little small things. Do I think it's worth the upgrade? Um, and especially if it's a paid upgrade, well, I, I would say to you, it depends on what you're going to be using it for. What do you use your most people that watch my channel? Um, I got to imagine that at least the majority of you not only do mixing and mastering work. That's why you come to me for training. But you also do a lot of your own music creation and recording or you record clients. Um, with all the new features coming up uh, in this version for, for that kind of a thing, I think it's absolutely worth 
uh, the upgrade price, as I've already watched some of the videos that PreSonus put out on some of those new features. If you're into using those features, it's worth the upgrade. Um, if you're more of just doing what I do, where you just kind of uh, use it for mixing as a mixing platform, is it worth it? Um, I think the fact that because it seems to be a little more stable and it also seems to be more snappy and a little bit more better performance, it's probably more refined under the hood to give you a little bit better uh, experience the way it runs. It runs a little more smoothly. For me, yes, I think it is. I, any little advantage that I can get when you're working and stuff all day long, any new little uh, extra little creature comfort, if you will, whether it's something as simple as the, the channel notes or the coloring or whatever, um, to me, it's worth it. It's a reasonable price, I'm sure. But again, go to presonus.com. And you can check out the pricing upgrade depending on the version that you're using. And once again, if you're running a Mac, it does run in Sierra. I'm sure it does run in high Sierra. If you're running Windows, I'm not a Windows-based user, but I'm sure it runs just fine in Windows 10, Windows 7. But go to the Studio One or PreSonus website and check out all the specs and your computer requirements to make sure that this version is going to be compatible with your system. So I hope you found this video somewhat helpful. Again, I know it's short. And I know it's like, okay, Dave, you really didn't tell us a whole lot. Right. There's not a whole lot here in this version that really pertains to what I do every day. At least I didn't find it yet. But I wanted to at least put out this video because I know a lot of you are going to email me and ask me and want to know what I think. And that's what I think. As I use this more and more, obviously, if there's more little golden nuggets that I use in my workflow that were not a part of version 3.5, I will certainly cut the videos and share that with you. Um, you will see this live in action if you join me uh, this coming Saturday night, which I believe is the 26th of May, 2018. Depending on when you're watching this video, I'm going to be doing a live stream on our YouTube channel comparing a lot of the new Fat Channel XT plugins, uh, the PreSonus analog plugins, analog uh, emulation plugins to their Wave and Universal Audio counterparts. And I'm going to do all of that in version four here. So you'll get to see how it kind of performs uh, live right on the screen. So uh, until the next video, this has been Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Again, thank you so much for your support. Go to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com, sign up for your five free mixing training courses, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.